All right, YouTube, what's up? What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be talking about linear equations. We're going to be reviewing this concept, um, and we're going to try to do so thoroughly. All right, so welcome along for the ride. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the equation of a line. Okay, now the equation of a line has four letters. Okay, one is Y. And this represents the dependent variable, something that we've talked about when it comes to relationships between two variables. You could have an independent and a dependent variable. Now, y is always, always, always the dependent variable. Okay. Um, X, on the other hand, is the independent variable. Now, this is the variable that either has the most control or you have the most control over this variable. Either way, we call it the independent variable. All right, so an example, I have a bus full of students. Um, I don't know how many students there are, but I have a bus full of students uh, for a trip. I have to analyze the cost. X would be the number of students that go. Okay, that variable has more control over how much cost um, the trip would be to me. Okay, if there are more and more students, I probably need uh, more and more transport, which would cost me more and more money, all right? So the cost depends on the number of students that are going. In other words, the cost is the dependent variable because it depends on the cost. All right, so that is X and Y, and that was a mouthful. Yikes. All right, now, what the heck is M, and what the heck is is B. What are these things? Okay, now M, folks, has several names. Okay, it has the name constant of variation. Now, the reason why we call it constant of variation is because it itself is a constant. M does not change. Once you have a value for M, it does not change. It remains constant, just as constant as math is during your high school careers, okay? Now, variation, why does it say constant of variation? Well, it's because it's beside a variable. In fact, it's beside the independent variable. Very interesting, constant of variation, hashtag awesome. Okay, now, another name for M is the rate of change rate of change if you see a word problem and you see words like per okay or every for example uh, okay it costs five dollars per student what they gave you is the value for M. It is a rate. It is a per value value. Okay, five dollars per student. Okay, that is going on a trip. That is the rate of change. Now, these aren't the only names for M. There's one more. And this one is perhaps the most important. Do not forget this. The name rhymes with elope. That's right, it is slope. Now to me, I like this name the most, the slope. I like it the most because it reminds me of an incline, okay? Now why is that important? Well, when you draw y equals mx plus b, let me do this in separate colors here, we got red, Let's say this is the line that I want to draw. If I drew y equals mx plus b, I will get a straight line. Perhaps something like that. y equals mx plus b. Um, I can determine how slanted m and b are. Excuse me. I can determine how slanted the line is. All right? And I do that. By, by this remarkable equation called, oh, sorry, the equation is M equals rise over run. I can use this equation to determine how slanted or steep 
uh, my line is. So anyways, slope is a good name because it kind of reminds me of steepness of incline. That is what the slope is. It tells me how steep my straight line y equals mx plus b truly is. That's what I love about the slope name. Now, we've covered m, we've covered y, we've covered x. What the heck is b? Dun, dun, dun. Ladies and gentlemen, b is the following. b is called the y-intercept. Okay? The y-intercept. I have zero room to write that. Very nice. Let's just call it y-int. Let me try to fit it down here. y-intercept. When you draw a straight line, folks, let's do this down here. When you draw a straight line on a grid, let's say the grid is in gray, okay? And the grid has two variables. You guessed it, x and y. If I were to draw y equals mx plus b, it might be a line just like this. Whoa, a straight line? So cool. There's this amazing point right there. It is where the line y equals mx plus b crosses the y-axis. We call that point the y-intercept because it intersects the y. It touches the y-axis at that value. Okay, now, once more, this guy's equation is y equals mx plus b. From the equation, folks, you should be able to read the value for the y-intercept, meaning where it hits the y-axis. It is the letter b. Now, b is a constant. It is a value that is fixed. You will be able to read off the value. So I might give you an equation, for example, example, y equals, let's say, 2x plus 1. I can read off the value for the y-intercept right from the equation. This means the y-intercept is equal to 1. What I can also say about the y-intercept, another name for b, is the initial value. So b has a couple names. Let's do this in white. y-int is b, but so is starting value or initial value. Now the reason why we call it the starting value, folks, is because the line extends outward from this very special point on the y-axis. Line extends outward from this point. So we can call this point our starting point or initial value. We also call it the initial value for one very special reason. You see the x value at that point, just the x value, just the x value, okay? The x value at that point, folks, is zero. Does everyone see that? This is the x-axis, okay? These are super positive values here, positive, let's say, 10. If I go this way, I'm decreasing an x toward the center. At the very center value, the x is 0. So folks, at this y-intercept, let me erase some of these lines so it's not as confusing. Boom, boom, boom. At this center line right here, the x-coordinate is 0. It's just like a real number line. Whoops. A real number line. We've got positive values here, and in the middle, we've got zero. And on the left side, we've got negatives. So the x-coordinate of any y-intercept, folks, is zero. Never forget that. Never, ever, 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 ever forget that. Okay? So that is 
linear relations in a nutshell. Okay, y equals mx plus b. Before we go, there are two types of what we call variations. What this just means is two types of lines. All right, let's draw the grid. We just talked about y-intercept. That's where the line crosses the y-axis. Great, and that's when the x-coordinate is zero. Great. So I could draw two types of straight lines, okay? One that crosses the origin, okay? And one that doesn't cross the origin. I hope you can see that these two lines, I should have done them in different color. I hope you can see that these two straight lines actually have two different y-intercepts. One has a y-intercept of zero, meaning b equals zero, and the other has a y-intercept not equal to zero, meaning it could be two or five in this case, meaning b is not zero. When this is the case, folks, when b is not zero, we call this a partial variation. Okay, that is a special name for it. Partial, partial variation. Variation, I completely botched that spelling, I apologize. Partial variation. When b is equal to zero, meaning when the line crosses the uh, origin, we call this a direct variation direct okay so that is what we have when we're basically talking about two types of straight lines one that crosses the origin one that doesn't okay now one more major point that I want to make and this is fundamentally important okay what if I give you a plot with an awesome x and y axis and along the y axis I give you a set of values let's say I don't know for a uh, I don't know, 12 cool and I give you along the x axis uh, 5 10 uh, 15 and so on and folks, what if I give you the following line? I go, so I go boom, 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 boom. I give you this line on a, on a plot, okay? And what they want is the equation. You first have to know what two values you need for this equation. To represent an equation, folks, you need the following two things. In the equation, you have y equals mx plus b, and there are only two values that you actually have to find. One is m, and the other is b. m is the slope, as we discussed, and b is the y-intercept. That's where the straight line crosses the y-axis. Now, this b value should be very easy to find. All you have to do is look at the plot. Where does the straight line cross the y-axis? Oh, evidently, it crosses at zero. What that means is b is zero. Now, how the heck do we get our slope? We have b, how do we get our slope? All you need are two points on the plot, two nice points on the plot that you can easily read. Now I gave you four in this case, all right? But most cases, you'll probably deal with the beginning point and maybe the end point. Let's just use those for now, okay? How many units do I go up by? Well, I go from zero to 12. That's about 12 units. How many units do I go across by? Well, I go from 0 to 15. 
that's 15 units. Folks, what we found is how much our line rises by and how much our line goes across or runs by. The equation for the slope, as I mentioned earlier in this video, is rise over run. We found a rise. It's a positive 12, meaning up 12. So if I draw point to tick, I've got up, up 12 units. If I go over, I go right 15. Up means positive, right means positive, which means left means negative, and down means negative. Remember that. So from this, from those two values, I should be able to calculate my slope. The rise is a positive 12, and the run is a positive 15. If I reduce that, folks, what would I get? I would get 4 over 5. That's m. So with m equals 4 over 5 and b equals 0, I can write my linear equation. y equals 4 over 5x plus 0. Now in this special case, I don't actually need uh, the zero over here because adding nothing does nothing. So I can remove this entirely and this folks is my equation. If I were to change x, if I were to vary x and calculate my y based on this equation and I would plot all those points, guess what line I would get? I would get precisely this line that goes through the origin. So this is the equation of this line. Y equals 4 over 5x. As x gets bigger, y gets bigger. That is linear relations. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, comment, and boys and girls, I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. Love ya. Bye-bye.